Hi everyone. Hi everyone. Good evening. Hi. Hello, hello. Hi everyone. Happy Wednesday. Happy blessed Wednesday to all of you, ladies. You can unmute, unmute yourselves, by the way. Yeah. We'll tell you when to mute. We have um, Sis Maricor who's uh, watching us from Canada. Yeah. Yeah. Since I'm gonna visit you next, like in the next few months, I'll let you know. <laughs> yeah. I'm so we right. have Hi. Sis Donna. Hi, Sis Audrey from Virginia. Hi. Good evening. We have Sis uh, Jeanette, Sis Donna, Lita. We have Michelle. And then we have Army. Are you related to Sis Eileen? Uh, and then, welcome, <laughs> Hi, welcome. Yeah. Are you based in Manila? Or are you based here? No, they're actually based in the Philippines. Wow, welcome. Thanks for joining. Hi, Rachel. Hi, Arian. Who else? Hi, Claire. <laughs> Hi, Sis Charo. Hi, Sis Dot. I'm just going through the list right now. Sis Maria Corazon is still connecting her audio. <laughs> I know. He's <laughs> trying to. Yeah, thank, yeah, no, thanks everyone for uh, being early. Yeah. Hi, yes. Hi, Sis Nori. Uh, uh, it's amazing to see everyone. Like, I'm, I'm really realizing that I missed all of you. Yeah, who else is in the room? Who else I haven't said hi to? Hi, Sis J. Hi, everyone. Hi. hi. How's everyone? I mean, like, earlier today, we're actually discussing because it was really hot. Uh, I know, Sis Kelly, in LA, it's around 81 degrees there. So, Sis Kelly, how are you enjoying your summer? Oh, yes. Actually, we're in few days. <laughs> it's been really hot. We, it's the last week of the kids' vacation, so we're gonna be going to Hawaii. Oh wow! Um, wow. That's nice. Right. So, How long are you right gonna be there? The, right before the school starts. Right. That's nice. So, who else is going out of town in the next two weeks, taking advantage of the summer vacation? anyone if you don't want to speak right now if you don't want to unmute yourselves like you can actually talk to us in the chat any yeah. upcoming vacation that you want to share That's, uh yeah before right now a wild summer yeah uh, you see scale you're going you're coming over here la too. yeah <laughs> <laughs> so yeah now officially california is a vacation spot yes for we have Sis Abby also, who's going to be here uh, yeah. celebrating with us very exactly. soon. Yeah. I so think a lot scale, of us are actually traveling, right? Traveling to LA. Yeah. A lot of us. Yeah. Sis Gail, so I'm excited for our uh, topic for today. Uh, and yeah. we actually have this question that, we, that you were asking uh, last time when we were chatting. Uh, remember you said uh, what was the funniest and most interesting like piece of advice anyone gave you before you left your country because i think most of us here are immigrants right <laughs> yeah I, myself i've been here for over 12 years now and yeah i i still remember you know because like i haven't been here to the states before when i moved here it was my first time so mm -hmm. i never been here in the states um so what was the was best like, advice? Yeah, I was wondering, like, you know, what, 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 what does it look like here? Like, how's my life gonna be here? And I heard a lot of different advice 
So how about you, Sis Gail? What was your funniest and most interesting piece of oh, advice? Wow. Actually, for me, I think the funniest, I think nothing beats what my dad did. But it was when I moved to Singapore. So I, I lived in Singapore before the U.S. So when I moved to Singapore, so Shemper, like coming from the Philippines. So my dad actually gave me a pair of gloves, so cleaning gloves. And he told me specifically, okay, this is specially for you because from now on, you'll be washing your clothes and you'll be doing your own dishes. <laughs> so because my dad said we were senoritas growing up, so... When I moved to Singapore, obviously we didn't have help there, so I had to do all the chores. So that was my dad's parting gift to me. So, and I think like moving here, nothing has really topped that. So that's my memorable relocation gift, honestly. Tawa, you said Kelly, like what's your funniest? Yeah. That, oh, that's good to know. Yeah, I wasn't prepared for that. <laughs> told me about that. But it's good that we have dishwasher, right? <laughs> right, yeah, here, exactly. So that's actually a non-negotiable. I think I shared that in March during the the episode with Sis Maricor and Sis Rain. Like, dishwasher is a necessity. <laughs> yeah, how about um, our attendees tonight? Yeah. Everyone can share. Um, any interesting? Even though it's not funny, like what what advice did you receive before you moved? Before you relocated? Yeah, let's talk. Let's call Sis Lean. Sis Lean is like <laughs> I think she she remembers something. Go ahead, Sis Lean. Maybe you could share. Unmute yourself. Oh my God! When no, I no, came no. here the first time, I was so nervous, and I was you know like. <laughs> Um, I what I did in the plane during the my whole trip, I was just praying and saying, you know, I was not able to sleep. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> I was so nervous. So, but um, yeah, they said um, when you uh, live here in the United States. Especially you are like an immigrant, it's the first time that you'll be coming here. It's gonna be not easy, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because uh, uh, you will do everything on your own. And uh, yes, that's, um, <laughs> that's the um, thing that was uh, really... <laughs> and you know what? Um, when I moved in here, I was... The thing why I was uh, nervous, I was pregnant. Oh wow! With, with my um, wow, with my how far along, along sis? How far along were you? Yeah. Two months ago, and uh, I deliver. I came here in January and I delivered in March. So I was really wow. Being my, uh, you know, my my belly. I was wearing like. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, loose jacket and loose pants, so uh -huh. they will notice me. <laughs> but you know, uh, thank God that you know I was not mm, in the when I in the immigration. <laughs> mm -hmm. They did not notice it, but see. you know, yeah. Wow! I, so that's really an adventure coming here. Not only because you're gonna be in a different country but there it's a different life stage for you yes so that's my um experience coming here wow thank Amazing. you for sharing wow thank you, you. sis caro from the chat box first thing i learned how to cook rice and using finger as measuring tool yes yeah i know that's actually the asian way of measuring rice to water ratio right Yes. Like, I feel that like you're not really legit Asian if you don't know how to do that. <laughs> I'm sorry, but that's that's our trait. <laughs> yes. Yeah, oh, so next, well, question, Gail. next question is Gail. What was uh, what we want to ask? What was your first meal here in this? Yeah, night? first meal. First meal. So mine, I it was because when I got here, I took it took me a long time at the airport uh, for to check my papers and everything. So when I uh, came out of the airport, it's already like twelve midnight. So every now and then closed. 
Yeah, so uh, we went to McDonald's. <laughs> it was my <laughs> first meal. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm seeing in the chat box, we have I hop for Audrey, yes. and then I hop, Sis Jeanette, who else can remember their first meal? Who ate at Jollibee? <laughs> Dennis. Dennis, yeah, the, Dennis is actually yeah, pretty uh, common as first meal. Oh, uh, there's the Black in the Box, amazing. <laughs> who else can remember? Nobody ate at Jollibee. <laughs> <laughs> nah, okay. yeah. yeah well thank you so much ladies for sharing it was nice uh to see all of you tonight and um, thank you for that video all right good evening again sisters hello from north america and i know that we are being joined by our sisters from the philippines so welcome welcome again my name is gail and I'm co-hosting tonight's episode with Kelly here in our Girls' Night In. So, Kelly, hi again. How are you? Hi, everyone. Yeah. So, sisters, are you ready for another episode? I know it's been a while. So, type I'm ready in the chat box if you are. There you go. They're ready. ready. Okay, awesome. So, sisters, you know, we are so happy that you are here with us tonight. It's been a while since we actually had this GNI format. I mean, the last time we had this same format was in March, actually, um, because we had our retreat in April and we had our Harana night in May. And then we didn't have one in June, but we also had like Jewels Conference in July. So technically, this format has been, you know, it, it's been it's been a long time. And right now we're just, you know, very excited to just gather Tonight, in our episode entitled Anchored in Faith, Building, Resist Building Resilience as an Immigrant. So, as in every episode, you know, tonight we are celebrating women. We are celebrating each one of you. So, tonight's topic is actually a continuation of the panel discussion that we had at Jules. So, who here watched that session on parenting? So, we talked about um, raising Catholic children as immigrants. Anybody? Okay, I assume that more than 50% of us actually watched that panel discussion. So, and I'm sure you found that panel discussion inspiring and insightful. And while that session focused on parenting, our panelists actually also shared their own journey living here as immigrants. And since the majority of our GNI attendees are immigrants or children of immigrants, we have shared experiences. And that's why we wanted to expound on that theme, because we are in this journey together. So tonight, we will hear a beautiful story, and we will also be reflecting on the individual challenges us immigrants face and how we can develop emotional strength and fortitude to overcome these challenges. So, ladies, are you ready to begin tonight's GNI episode? I, I'm asking again, ladies. I kind of need more enthusiasm. Okay, there you go. Okay, maybe you should type the word resilience since that's our topic for tonight. Type resilience. There you go. All right, let's make ourselves comfortable and be ready for another memorable episode of GNI. And of course, as with every event, we'd actually like to start with a prayer. So our worship leader for tonight is one of our resident worship leaders here in GNI. We love her so much. That's why we keep on inviting her. And she was also one of our panelists in the recent Jewels Conference. So she's a wife and mom to four wonderful boys who have autis autism. And she is an urgent care physician. And she loves to sing karaoke and smeal app during her free time. So sisters, let's welcome Sis Chara Santos. Hello. Thank you, Sis Gail. So nice to see everyone here. Thank you. Thank you. Are you ready to be blessed today? Say amen. 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 <laughs> amen. amen. Yes. Say amen. God will speak amen. to you today. Tell 
I guess it's hard. Tell everybody here in the screen. <laughs> God will speak to you today. Yes. Yes. The <laughs> Sorry, that's my podcaster. <laughs> yeah. So thank you. Thank you for everyone being here. Um, you know, I, I think we're all in diff different time zones, right? So um, who here? Raise your hand. The people who are in the Philippines. Um, in the thing or in the U.S. In the East Coast. So we're all in different time zones so but you know i think the lord is so happy the lord is so happy that you we are all here um not just because we're gathering together in his name to glorify him to praise him but i think the lord is so happy that we are here because he wants to bless us he wants to give us rest you know i know you guys all the beautiful women here are all busy with your own lives. You know, you have your careers, um, the, the moms, you know, being a daughter, you know, you have so many hats, you know, uh, that you are uh, wearing. And the Lord just, I think I just want to invite us all to just come as we are to the Lord today and just let him speak to our hearts today. So as we Come in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Father God, thank you. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for this time. And, you know, we have, we have so much, so much on our plates right now. But we just want to take this time just to be here. Just being present. Be present with you. We... Take a deep breath and inhale your goodness, your grace. We receive your Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, enlighten our minds, our hearts to listen to your word for us today. And we exhale and just let go of anything that is burdening us right now. And in this song, and this message is, I believe, is the Lord's message for us today. Isaiah 43 says, But now says the Lord, who created you, Jacob, and formed you, Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, and you are mine. When you pass through waters, I will be with you. Through rivers, you shall not be swept away. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, nor will flames consume you. For I, the Lord, am your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt as ransom for you, Ethiopia and Seba in exchange for you, because you are precious in my eyes. And honored and I love you I give people in return for you and nations in exchange for your life fear not for I am with you standing at your door my heart is calling yours come fall into my arms you're weary from it all been running for too long I'm here to bring you home I'm Reaching out, I'll chase you down. I dare you to believe how much I love you now. Don't be afraid, I am your strength. We'll be walking on the water, dancing on the way. 
When you pass through waters, I will be with you. Through rivers, you shall not be swept away. Look up and lift your eyes. The future's open wide. I have great plans for you. Your past is dead and gone. Your healing has begun. I'm making all things new. Oh, I'm reaching out. I'll chase you down, the lover of your soul. I dare you to believe how much I love you now. Don't be afraid. I am your strength. We'll be walking on the water, dancing on the waves. When I see heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you set in place, what is man that you are mindful of him? What is the son of man that you care for him? Yet you made him little less than a god and crowned him with glory and honor. I set every star into place so you would remember my name. I made it all for you. You are my masterpiece. You are the reason I sing. This is my song for you. I set every star into place so you would remember my name. I made it all for you. You are my masterpiece. You are the reason I sing. my song for you I'm reaching out I'll chase you down I dare you to believe how much I love you now don't be afraid I am your strength we'll be Walking on the waters, dancing on the waves. Walking on the waters, dancing on the waves. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Amen. That was uh, the Lord's message for us today. And I hope you are all blessed. And, you know, there's another song. <laughs> and actually, <laughs> this one may require some dancing. I'm not a dancer. I'm a singer. <laughs> so I will need your help. Okay, who, who's a fan of the 90s uh, R&B music? Because that's kind of the song. <laughs> so I think a lot of us will... Uh, be, uh, relate to the music but this song is entitled the way way truth and life and you know jesus said if you continue in my word you are truly my disciples then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free and you know a lot of the times the trials that we go through um it's it's you know the the devil the he works in lies you know that's that's his main mo he's like the mm -hmm. uh, the bad re internet reviewer you know <laughs> he's gonna put a bad internet review and and he's going to make you believe no don't 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 go there you know that's I, it's boring or it's not it's not fun this is the way you know the devil will try to tell you this is the way to be happy you know so so you're sad you're you're, you know, we have this need, you know, we need, we have this need for love and, and the devil wants to tell you, oh, this is how you get love, you know, so we, we, we look for love in the wrong ways because, but 
Jesus is the way, Jesus is the truth, and He is the source of love. And, and that's what this song is about. <laughs> and I'll need your help. <laughs> so let's sing this. And if you want to stand up, stretch, you know, get, get yourself pumped up. <laughs> if you're like me, I don't exercise, so I'll need to uh, stretch a little bit. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. All right, guys. Looking through the lens of a love that never ends. How great it is. You came into my life and now everything is right. How great it is. Living, 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 living my best life. Cause I'm living, 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 living the most high. You are the way, the truth, and life. You are. You are the way, the truth, and life. You are. You are the way, the truth, and life. You are. And everything is better with you. You are the way, the truth, and life. You are. You are the way, the truth, and life. You are. You are the way, the truth, and life. You are. And everything is better with you Walking to this life the best of my sight How great it is hey. I'll always go your way And that's never gonna change How great it is I'm living, 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 living my best life <laughs> Living, 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 living the most high you are the way, the truth, and life. You are. You are the way, the truth, and life. You are. You are the way, the truth, and life. You are. And everything is better with you. You are the way, the truth, and life. You are. You are the way, the truth, and life. You are. You are the way, the truth, and life. You are. And everything is better with you. Okay, I'm gonna need some some women to do some slides here. <laughs> All right. Slide to the left, hey! Slide to the right, oh! Give him all you got now. Give him all your praise now. Slide to the left, hey! Slide to the right, oh! Give him all you got now. Give him all your praise now. Slide to the left, hey! Slide to the right, oh! Give him all you got now. Give him all your praise now. Slide to the left, hey! Slide to the right, oh! Give him all you got now. Give him all your face now. What the way? Okay. What the same? Because I'm living, living, living my best. Yes, I'm blessed. I am blessed. I'm the test. Because I got my HD when I got my JC. Living free, living, 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 living king. Living with the me, yeah! And everything is better with you. Yay! Let's give the Lord a clap off me and let's give ourselves also a, a hand, a round of applause. Thanks, guys. <laughs> wow, beautiful. Thank you. Thank you, sis uh, Charo, for that dance move. <laughs> <laughs> very, very uplifting. Thank you for this beautiful worship. And then also, we wanted to thank our attendees, our sisters tonight. Sis Aryan, I love your dance moves. And also, we have Sis Jay. Thank you. Thank you so much, sister, for that beautiful worship. And for that reminder that Jesus is life itself. And he is not only the life right now, but eternal life, which we receive only through him. And he is giving us a better way to live our lives through him. And you no, know, we have to, he's waiting for us. He's there. He's waiting for us to accept him as our Lord and as our Savior. So thank you, sisters. Mm -hmm. And so going on to our topic for tonight um, about the immigrants, I'm so excited to introduce our guest 
speaker for tonight. But before that, um, this is interesting. I actually uh, researched some facts about immigrants. So I wanted to share with all of you um, because to me, I was like, oh, wow, this is interesting. Things that I didn't know. Um, so did you know that there are actually 41 million foreign born uh, here in the U.S.? That's number one. Number two that I want to share, 80% of immigrants come from Asia and or Latin America. So there's a lot of Asian, right? And then number three, foreign born workers contribute about $2 trillion every year, right? It just shows that we are hard workers. And three, immigrants are more likely to receive a doctorate the natives. So that's why she's Charo. <laughs> she's a very good example. And then three immigrants tend to work in fields that require advanced education, including STEM, STEM, which encourages research and other professional work. And then last, immigrants often start their own businesses. So that's why a lot of us are, you know, entrepreneur, business owners. So those are interesting facts. All right. So tonight, um, I, I know that we've all been waiting for this. Our speaker for tonight will share her story as an immigrant here in the U.S. and how her faith gave her strength in facing a lot of difficulties and challenges too. So please welcome our Speaker for tonight, she's born and raised in the Philippines. She migrated here in the U.S. in August of 1999. She is a teacher, entrepreneur, and she is an owner of a family daycare. She is a peace planter of Peace Light Eagle Rock with her best friend, Lita. And she believes that we are sent by twos to proclaim God's mission here on earth. So please help me welcome Sis Eileen Prada. Sis Eileen, are you here? Yes, I'm here. Perfect. I'm here, I'm here. I'm, I'm so <laughs> uh, <laughs> shocked with the picture. Where'd you get it? <laughs> <laughs> That's as our uh, Sis uh, Mariko did a really good research on. I know, <laughs> amazing. I was younger then. <laughs> so, that's that's why little... I don't see any difference. Uh, oh, yeah, this was last you. year, right? <laughs> oh, yeah, really. I hope. I hope it was. <laughs> Sana all. Yeah. Get it. But yes, thank you so much. That's a wonderful introduction. And hi to everybody. Good evening. Good evening. Um, and shout out first of all for my family. See, uh, my sister Abby is there, Abby Arius, and Ate Maricor, Ate Lita's uh, sister, and also my nieces, Army. I think they're listening. Thank you. They're from the Philippines. And to my um, Eorok piece, thank you for the support. And it, yes, I am so blessed and honored tonight. I'm actually privileged when they, um, Sis Gail, uh, call, uh, Sis Kelly called me up and asked me to be a speaker. I was like, me? I was like, Okay, okay. I said, but you know, I will always say yes to God. And um, thank you so much for giving me this opportunity and also for trusting me to share um, um, this experience that I have with God. And I was just going through it in my head and I was asking God, Lord, what am I going to say? And then some of the verses that I will be getting is actually from Hebrews 11, um, the whole chapter of Hebrews 11. Yeah. Faith is the realization of what is hoped for and evidence of things not seen. So true. And um, so that I can tell you uh, how this real verse really worked for me, let me just tell you a little background of myself. So like I said, we are from, I was born in the Philippines and then, um, but coming here, I was already working in this big company, um, which um, uh, it pays a really big, uh, not really big, but it's not lacking and it's not the minimum wage. Me and Lita were working in these good companies with good benefits uh, um, that 
are already. But so when this call came to us, me and Lee Tien says, let's um, go abroad. And says, we were thinking, oh, um, we may not be rich, but we are actually not lacking back home. So when we were um, had this calling, we really had to pray, really prayed hard for it. And because it's something very major for us, because here we don't have families. Totally. We don't have families, except for her dad. Her dad was living back uh, back then before. He was still alive, but we can't stay with him because he was just renting his space. So when we um, when we prayed for it, we were uh, it's a blessing that me and Atalita already have that personal relationship with God. And so in our major decision and even small de- decision, we really um, seek God's guidance for that. But the thing is, in this community that we, that we belong to, they would ask us, why are you going there? And so we just said, oh, maybe it's another chapter of our life. And maybe God has a mission there for us. That's why it's always send by twos. And maybe that's where we're going to find a special someone, right? So that was in um, August of 1999. So we came here and to try our luck. And in this verse, by in in, Ch- uh, in Hebrews, it says, "By faith, um, Abraham. By faith, he obeyed and went out, not knowing where he was to go. By faith, he sojourned in the promised land, as in a foreign country. So we came here with the plan of trying our luck and staying for good to work here. But but we did make a pact with God that if ever our tourist visa or our tourist stay would be over, we're not going to risk it, but we would go home because we do not." want to risk the, um, not seeing our family for a long time. So we made that promise that we're going to do that. And then we also made a promise that if we are going to stay there, we're also going to serve God. And so we started here, um, August. That Actually, when I was thinking about it, August 1st, I um, greeted Atelita, Uy, anniversary natin. It's August 1st, na last August 1st, 1999. Um, so now you can do the math. So how, how long we've been here. So, but God was so good to us. You could just see how his hand worked in the first six months that we were here. Imagine he sent us employers out of the blue to put, who put, that uh, petitioned me as a teacher and then Atalita as a travel agent. If you read here the story of how I got petitioned, it, it's really amazing. So before our six months was over, our working visa came out already. So the verse from Hebrews 11, faith is the realization of what is hoped for and evidence of things not seen really came through for us. I always tell people when we came here that it was like a leap of faith for us. As in talagang, Lord, you take charge and we'll trust you. But then financially, it was also a struggle since as a, if you're a petition, you don't get paid much. And plus we're having, um, we have to pay for our lawyers. And then we also got our sec- our own place back then in our second year so it was really a really tight budget so that's why um we are so blessed because our families back home do not obligate us to send money you you monthly we have to send monthly no they don't um it, it's something uh, a big blessing for us and even you the balik buy-in boxes man you can count in our fingers how many boxes we've sent so we only send like during emergencies or christmas or really rare cases. And it's it's good that um, my parents and also Atelita's mom are still younger back then. So it's it um, they don't really get sick very often or they, they're very, really very healthy. So that's why um, it's a big blessing for us. So we just entrust them to God and even our siblings and our their families, our nieces and nephews. So we just surrender everything to God. So that's something... Um, that is a big blessing for me and for Atelita. Now, being away from my family is really hard for me because I've never been away from my family for a long time. And as um, back then, as for all those who've been here for a long time, you know how communication is back then? We use phone cards to call our, our families. So during Christmas season, it would take like an hour before you could connect because <laughs> so all everybody's calling so it's really hard unlike right now you can just do messenger facetime right phone card yes that's right sister charo so uh, and and we and atelita sometimes have this um sideline business 
she would do phone card and every people would say, can I buy phone cards? So it's a good thing that she has it. So every time I really would um, feel depressed, can I get a phone card? I need to call home. So it's, it's something really hard for me. And in the first two to three years of, he, of staying here, um, Christmas, when Christmas season comes, I really feel depressed. And I could really feel it. The nice thing about it is that you can always be honest with God about how you feel. You know, this, Lord, I'm sad. Or, and the, what, the wonderful thing is I'm glad I have my best friend with me so that we comfort each other every time you feel sad. And like what we have also promised, we, we were going to serve him even uh, when we come here to the States. So on our second year here, we joined the singles group and also um, we joined uh, as a catechist. So me and Lita came, became catechist at St. Dominic's. So that's what is, that was a promise we made to him that we will continue to serve him. And that was also on our second year, that was also the year that Lita's dad got diagnosed with lung cancer. You know how God works? God, um, in the first year that we are here, Lita's dad would drive us to places that we need to go to, like show us the, the way, like, um, oh, you need to go to DMV, you need to go do this. And even if we're not staying with him, he would drive us around. So he was like taking care of us on our first year. But on our second year, he got sick. As in totally um, out of the blue, says, he, he was always pointing to his, um, his chest and says, Anna, this is the one that's going to kill me. Because just going up the stairs was very hard for him. So in our second year, we have our own place already. So you, uh, the verse from um, Hebrews 10, it says, you need endurance to, the, do, do, to do the will of God and receive what he has promised. This was really trying times for us, not just physically, because we had to take care of him, um, because he ha we had to take, uh, take him with us in our apartment, um, because he was only given six months to live. And it, it was emotionally draining, especially for Adelita. But sure enough, God has his ways, because my parents were given visas um, in 2000, uh, December in 2000, and then her mom and her youngest sister was given visas here in the States. Out of the blue, so it's like they just planned on applying, says, oh, go apply. So we were actually praying um, when they were being interviewed. Um, Atelita and I were doing rosary and stuff like that. So when her dad got sick in the, um, January of 2001, my parents came in this um, February of 2001, so even God himself made a way for us by bringing my parents here and Atalita's mom and my sister to help us take care of his dad until he passed away in August 25, 2001. So he was still the source of our endurance and strength. He really never abandoned us. And during the wake of Lita's dad, the community where we joined in, the singles, they were there to help us out. Imagine it's just, we've just been there for two years and with some friends that we've met, they were there for us who helped us out and showed us what we need to do. Now, our green card took about seven years to process. And during that seven years, a lot has happened too. Um, one was Lita's eldest sister passed away, but she was not able to go home because her papers were not ready yet. So we, wouldn't, we, we could not risk it. So we had to, um, she really had to, you know, um, just deal it here by herself and with me, of course, that she, her sister is gone with us or without her seeing her. Then finally, after seven years, we were able to get our green card and we were able to visit our families back home. You know, even if we didn't have enough money, it's just, okay, it's okay. We need to go. We need to see them. And you know, at the airport, it was funny when we got there at the airport. As in, talagang you really cried tulu talaga. Ah, tata, na. And my brothers, and it's like a, a big, uh, a big thing for us. But like what I always share with our friends, we were not able to save a lot um, because we were petitioned and materially, we don't have anything much to show. But we know that in those seven years, God has been very, very faithful to us. And it is just right for us to give that glory back to him. So moving forward, now we have our own business. We serve in the Feast Light Eagle Rock uh, since 2010 as Feast Planters at St. Dominic's, my best friend and I. And guess what? 
single pa rin kami. <laughs> We're still single. But that's okay. I mean, um, maybe this is our path. Maybe this is where God is calling us. Um, now, was it easy in the last, um, since to, uh, since we got our green card? No, it was not. Of course, it's not. It's ha- It has its up and downs. And there was even a time during this um um, during those years when my, my aunt, my Ate Eta, who lived with us in 2008, the community met her as well. And um, she passed away in 2012. And the community was there again for us. The Light of Jesus community was there for us when she passed away. And it was really hard. I mean, but it was not that hard because you felt the prayer of people around you. You know, every night they would be here um, it was strange because she was very healthy and she just went to Hawaii to visit um, her her son. And when she was visiting there, that's when she got sick and she passed away there. So we didn't even see her. So they were like shocked and says, what? What happened? They were like, because she was really a healthy person. But during those times, they were there for us, you know, helping us out, um, praying with us and Another thing that happened is during the pandemic. The pandemic was really hard for us, especially in our business, right? Because our daycare is our bread and butter, and we had to close down for about a month or uh, a month and a half. But during those scary times, God was still there for us. He provided for us out of the blue, and it's like he. You, the, the reason why we can't we have not received this thing is because that, that um, during the pandemic that was the time that God was sending this money to us and we were like wow so um so allow me to share some of the things I have learned in my walk with the Lord in a foreign land and how we were able to build our resilience now I know that in all walks of life there are really struggles and May you be in a foreign land, may you be in your own country, or um, you're just staying there. It's, it's a really hard a life. It, it's a part of life. Trials and adversities, uh, adversities are part of life. And, but it's even more harder if you live in a foreign land with different culture, different language, and um, if you're there by yourself, right? So, but the one, the one thing that I've learned is that we should always seek God's guidance, and we have to seek God through prayer. Um, when I told you in the beginning part, our coming here uh, and mo- most major decisions in our life, we seek God's guidance. And I've seen how events fall like different pieces of puzzle, you know, and just come together when you trust God. Now, how do you seek God's will? You seek God's will through prayer, your own prayer time and the prayer time of uh, the bread and the prayers of other people. You know, um, me and Lita, we have this um, place in Tagaytay that we go to every time we would make de- major decisions. Even just applying for our visa, we had to um, um, seek God's guidance on that. So there's this place in Tagaytay we call Munti- uh, it's called Munting Bukal. It's like um, a blessed sacrament, a big blessed sacrament where um, where anybody can go in and just pray. It was run by a lay person back then. So we would go there, spend an hour in front of the blessed sacrament. And then she is in her corner and I am in my own corner and we would just pray. And then at the end of our prayer time, we would go out and say, so what's the message? What's the message for you? This is what I hear. So okay. And then the same thing. And then we says, okay, confirm. So that's how we usually um, pray for major decisions in our lives. And, and you know what? If it's God's plan, he himself will make a way for you. Uh, but if it's not, it will happen because God will allow it to happen because we have free will. You know, we can push it. Lord, I really want it. Even if God's telling you, that's not my plan for you. That's not my plan for you. But God will allow it because we have free will. But the thing is, it's going to be a struggle. So it's like a struggle within a struggle. You're already struggling, but the struggle is even um, behind, big, yung harder. Have you ever felt that before? Yung, you're struggling, but um, bigat, bigat. But there are struggles that you know that it's, it, it's easy because you know that this is a plan of God for you. Okay. So the second one is what, that keeps me, what keeps me grounded through all these hardship and adversities is the knowledge that I am not alone, and I will never go through it alone. God will always be there for us, for me, and for you. Although sometimes I know we feel alone, 
but he's just right there beside you. Um, those moments when I feel depressed in you know, Christmas time, um, I would just cry my heart out to him. I said, Lord, I'm so sad. Or during those moments where our, when our papers were taking so long to be released, or even um, questions like, will it ever be released? But we just surrender it again and again to God. Sometimes, because you know, you surrender it and then you take it back. Lord, it's so hard. And then you surrender it back again. And it's okay, because God can take it. Another um, story that I have is that when Light of Jesus was just beginning, when we were just a small uh, group back then, um, at um, St. Um, St. Patrick's, we have this small LG or light group of um, that consists of ladies with different backgrounds, different ages, and uh, we would gather together like once a month, and we would share our God, how God is working in our lives. We would share about our joys, our struggles, and we would pray for each other. Now, most of us back then do not have our papers yet, and at that time, and some are even out of status. But the wonderful thing is, um, but they would continue to serve God. They would continue to love God. And sure enough, God never failed. If you could only hear the impossible stories and the impossible miracles, how God worked in their lives, you would be amazed how the, how the God's had them. Yeah, you just continue to um, serve him. Now, in that small LG right now, everybody all have their papers and each story is different. But the bottom line is God made it happen for all of us. So keep on serving God and keep on lo loving God. The third thing is do not lose your focus on God. Um, especially in this culture where they turn sin into something acceptable. This is a bit, oh, everybody's doing that. It's okay. But uh, materially, um, everything is within reach. If you really work hard, you can achieve anything or acquire anything you want. But along the way, you can actually lose your focus on God. And we live in a diversified culture and we have to respect other people's culture, right? Because it's a different, um, it's a melting pot. Now everything, um, it, I remember when we went to um, where, um, Universal Studios and we went into this ride, there were about eight of us. And in that eight, there are like four different nationalities. So can you just imagine? So talagang different, a lot of varieties, right? But I know that we have to respect other people's culture because that's who they are and this is who we are. And we have to, um, but we also have to stand up for, your, for our own culture and our own belief, especially our own faith. Hopefully we just don't blend in so that there's peace. Oh, okay na yan. That's okay, so that um, you, you just do their job so that there's peace. No, you also have to stand up for your own uh, faith and your own, um, your own belief so that people know you can make a difference in other people's lives, um, that people will also know that you are Catholic and that you follow Jesus. Um, I know it's easy to say, but it's hard to do sometimes. But one thing... Um, we could just start with something small, like, for example, praying in public before meals, right? I remember when I was teaching um, in the catechist and I asked one boy, uh, what, he has actually a student assistant, and I asked him, do you pray before, your, uh, before eating in your, uh, in your school? And then he goes, no, we're not allowed. And says, why? Because it's like, it's a respect that you don't do it. And, and I'm, I'm amazed that we are not allowed when I know it's a free country, right? Another thing that I remember, um, the reason why I actually said when I, uh, um, when, when I was teaching in the preschool during Halloween, you know how it is when Halloween, you would read books to kids and there would be stories about goblins, witches and stuff like that. And I'm allowed to read that. But come Thanksgiving, there's this book. He says, okay, you can read this book. But then there's a part there, there's a, um, a prayer that's going to be said. And there's a word that says, Amen. And she said, and, and, the, and my boss told me, just don't say um, the prayer and the amen. And I'm like, what? Why? Then that really hit me. And I says, why am I allowed to read about witches and goblins? But, but I'm not allowed to read about a prayer and an amen. So that um, at the back of my mind says, and I put up my own school. I'm going to let uh, I'm going to say prayers. 
So that's the thing that I want. That's, that's why I said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go have my own school. So those kind of things, little things, you have to really share your faith so people will know that, wow, this, pe- this person is different. And right now in our daycare, and I think I've said, shared it to some of the sisters, um, every time a parent comes in, we would always tell them that we practice our faith and that um, if it's okay for them, if you're, you could teach them a, a short prayer, it's not like we're bombarding them every day with prayers or anything. No, it, it's just like, Prayer are like angel of God and prayer before meals. That's about it. And we, if you don't want it, we respect it. We would tell them. And most of the parents would say yes. And I am so blessed with that, that I was able to, even in this um, small group, I, we are able to share our faith. And it, it, it's like um, seeking, um, you, you have to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. So, Let's not lose our focus on God because it is easy, especially in this country where anything is within reach. So hopefully, while, um, while we're trying to stand up and respect other people, we are also standing up for our own um, faith. And the last one is, um, I think this is just something about, um, about, um, how you are earning, and then because uh, we've met some Filipinos, we're in who give ev- everything to their families and leave nothing for them here. And I know each situation is different, right? Um, maybe one person is the better head of the family, so she has to, um, he has to provide for his family and extended families. We know how it is when we have extended families back home, so they had to do double jobs. And but we have to remember that you have to also leave some for yourself here because if something happens to you who will take care of you right and we also have to teach them to learn to help themselves and not be forever dependent on you because that is not helping them as well because you're teaching them to be a parasite and so it has to be teach them how to fish and not just give them the fish or just like what it says give a man a fish and you feed him for a day teach a man to fish and you feed him for a lifetime so it's something that they can be independent and be proud of, the, of themselves too. I remember I, the beginning, I told you that I, we would not send um, every month, but every time uh, we have a chance, we would send it. So I remember when I was sending some money to my brother, I know my brother was asking, but I was not able to send him. And he goes like, and I told him, I'm sorry, I was not able to send. And he says, okay, lang, ate. Oh, it's okay, sis. Kasi may dumarating naman. So I was just like, Taken aback, oh, wow, his faith is more than what I have because I was thinking about how it would be for, um, for him. But he just says, so he, I am not just their source. He has a, God is their source of, uh, of their provision, right? So, but I just like what I said, each situation is different. Like if there's an emergency, then you really have to help. But that it's a different scenario. So you just really have to discern when you need to really send or just um, make sure that can you do it yourself or something like that. So you really have to pray because we've met some Filipinos or some that we have known. So they were able to send their children to school already. Now they graduated. You know how long we are in here. But then now we've seen them and they're still working hard and says, why, why are you still working hard? Oh, because I'm sending my grandchildren to school. And I'm like, but that's already the duty or the responsibility of the parents. That's why you send them already. That's why you're working hard for here already to uh, put your children to school. So those kind of things. So you just really have to um, discern when um, they have to do it on their own or they, you have to fall back. Although I know how it feels. I know how it feels that when you are, um, they ask you for something and you just give uh, and you have the ability to give. It really makes you feel good though sometimes. So for myself, it boils down to seeking God in prayer and in maybe a big or decision, a small decision, seek God's will, because that is the one thing that we will never go wrong. And maybe, maybe sometimes his answer is taking too long. Um, Maybe it's about um, your papers, or maybe it's about someone or a special someone. Well, like, look at us, we're still single, but I think um, we've already past that stage already or maybe when you're struggling financially 
and you're asking, Lord, why are there other people already enjoying their harvest? Why am I still struggling? It's okay. Just continue to serve. Just continue to love God. And eventually God will show his plan to you. It's going to be a beautiful plan. And even in, in Hebrews 11, when Abraham did not see in his lifetime the promise of God, he kept on trusting God and he kept on believing that the one who made the promise is trustworthy. And then he had a different desire already. He desired not for a better homeland and it is the heavenly one. So even he was not able to see it in during his lifetime, he was able to see it in his perfect time. And he knows in heaven that he has the father of all nations, the father Abraham. So I think for myself anyways, that the one big thing that helped me be resilient and really uh, face all this hardship is being in a relationship with God. And I know um, being away from the family um, is, is hard. That's why my, my tata, who always said the reason why he did not go abroad is because we might have ended up broken family because most of his friends that he knows are ended up a broken family because it's hard. It's hard. I felt that loneliness when I was here. But if you belong, you have that personal relationship with God and you belong to a community that you're accountable to, it can be prevented. It, it can help you out to really stay in a country that is far away from the people that you love because you have their support. And that has made it easier for our journey here, as well as my family's prayer, because I know they have given their support to me by not, you know, asking too many things for me and praying for me all the time. So the last part is that when God said, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For anyone who approaches God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. So your reward will eventually come. We may not know when. It may not be here, but there will be a reward for you as long as you have that faith with God and that you can keep on believing and trusting in God. So I pray and I hope that you guys are so, um, you may not be immigrant, but you, will be, you are blessed tonight. And I thank you for listening tonight. God bless you. Wow. Thank you so much, uh, Sisa Eileen, for that powerful testimonial and also for being such a good example for all of us, all of us. Thank yeah, you. that's really amazing. Sis, my key takeaway here is that when all we see is our problems or pain and our challenges, we lose sight of God. So I, I think, Sis, so thank you for sharing that, you know, no matter you know, no, no matter what, we need to keep our eyes focused on God, believe in his promise. I love what you said. Um, be secure in knowing that you're not alone. Be secure yes. in knowing that you have God next to you. And it was actually like recently it was reminded, you know, I was reminded of that. And it's amazing. So thank you for reinforcing that tonight. You're welcome. Thank you. Yes. And then, yeah, I took a lot of notes. <laughs> and then I also <laughs> love that, you know, what you shared about, you know, the Philippines and then about your Balik, you're sending Balik Bayan boxes and the phone cards. <laughs> you really oh, no. phone cards. <laughs> um, wow. Like, look at now, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Everyone's so easy. here. Everyone has a uh, phone, FaceTime. <laughs> yeah, the world has become smaller, actually. You can just reach anybody anytime right now without having the phone card, right? Yes. And then Tagaytay is one of my favorite uh, places in the mm. Philippines. That's actually where uh, I got married in, oh. in Tagaytay. <laughs> So, yeah, mm -hmm. but thank you, Sisi. Um, you know, everything that you said here about, you know, um, God's faithfulness, about how he is uh, providing us. And I like what you said about you have to be honest with God, you know, with how you feel, right? Mm -hmm. Because I think uh, that is very important that you admit and that you be truthful to yourself That's and right. to God. Mm -hmm. And that... You know, after all of the things that you've been through, it's like, it's, I know it's a lot because I remember when I moved here in the States, the, I 
felt like I had a culture shock. I was so depressed. I didn't know anyone. And then you, like, experiencing all of that with your family, you're here, you're new, and everything is just happening. But you didn't lose sight of, you know, God. You continue on having your relationship with Him and, you know, serving Him and loving Him, and you didn't lose focus. So that's why, you know, you are so blessed, and we thank you for blessing other people and have being here uh, is such a blessing to a lot of us and knowing that besides all of this that you stay you know um faithful yes. so that is faithful. this Eileen actually uh was one of my prayer warriors when i moved here in 2014 so yes. in story moment. That, <laughs> yeah right like one thing that really helped me when i actually was adjusting to life here was the LOJ community because they are they were the first ones that I found here. Mm-hmm. So they were my first friends, my first, you know, like family outside of my immediate family. So I'm I'm forever, you know, grateful, you know, yeah. for having a community that supported me in the beginning. Like, you know, my story says, right? <laughs> so it yes. is struggle. amazing. <laughs> like now when I look back, it's just you know, it's God leading me to the community. And and I think, I guess that's it. Like w- once you have people rallying behind you, that also mm-hmm. helps. Rallying behind you, like praying for you, making sure that you always remember that, you know, whatever you're experiencing right now is just temporary because God has mm-hmm. made the planet. Right. If you have people constantly echoing that, that helps. That helped me a lot, you know, in mm-hmm. my early years here especially you know when i was struggling so thank you yeah and um i heard what you say earlier you share about like uh someone say amen it's true because at my work too i couldn't even say merry christmas it has to be Mm -hmm. happy holidays and you know what yesterday actually we have a new hire in our store and i didn't know that she was actually christian and someone sneezed and then she said god bless you and it was like <laughs> it was felt so good to hear yes. that she said god mm-hmm. so, yeah. so thank you yeah. for that, and i think sis Gail, we have time for do we have for time for questions yes yeah sisters do you have any questions for sis alien Anyone um, have a question? Anything or reaction? Yes, and um, or any inspiration like that you'd like to share? Yeah, Sislita, do you want to say anything? Yena, aking partner in in the BFF. Lord. <laughs> the BFF, Sislita. The BFF. <laughs> yeah. So also while we're waiting for uh, maybe some, you know, you're still thinking about what to ask. So after this, we're going to go on our um, cocktail, cocktail party. So cocktail party, we're going to go on to our breakout and we have about 12 minutes to uh, to talk, yeah. to share, you know, and just to get to know each other. Um, yeah. Yeah, because you don't want to speak here at our plenary. We'll give you a chance to actually be in a smaller group and connect with each other. So we will have um, some guide questions later, um, but maybe we'll, we'll explain that later. But first, I think we need to go uh, take pictures. Take pictures. All right. All right. Let's uh, yeah. turn on your camera. Okay. We want to see your faces like at least for two minutes, ladies. Alex? Okay, I'm calling my photographer here, and her name is Alex. Alex, can you take us a picture, please? All right, ready, ladies? One, two, three. Okay, one more. One, two, three. All right, thank you. Thank you, ladies. So, Sis Gail, what's our cocktail party? What's our reflection question? Do you have it with you? Let me there open. There you go. So we have two discussion questions. Uh, one is, can you share one instance 
where you recognize God's grace guiding you through a challenge? And number two, what did this experience teach you about relying on God for strength and comfort? So, yeah, so these are guide questions, but of course, the breakout session, feel free, you know, you don't have to answer, you don't have to share. Um, if you're in the mood to share, please do so. You can you can just, you know, get to know each other, you know, maybe just just say hi, you know, it's not really, you like I said, like, it's not forced. So we're this is actually, real, we can continue on dancing. <laughs> exactly. You can dance, you can sing, you can do whatever in that 12 minutes. So yes. yeah, so we're going to see you in 12 minutes. 12 minutes. We have our retreat next month. Exactly. Yeah. More time for you. Yeah, we're going to give you the details later, but yes, we're going to have a retreat and we're going to have a lot of time, you know, to talk to each other, to connect to each other. Yeah. Actually, is there anyone who would want to share right now anything that you like, um, you know, about our question? Yeah, if you want to share. Yeah. Anyone brave enough? <laughs> anyone who built resilience? To answer the question <laughs> and share their experiences. Anyone? Yeah, I know. Like, you know, as an immigrant, uh, all of us, a lot of people, you know, you went through a lot. But, you know, because of these experiences, because of the things that you went through, yeah. you've learned like, so much. You become stronger and you became more faithful. So share with us. Or yeah, your reaction, like hearing stories from your fellow like sisters. Like what's inspiring, what's funny, you know? Yeah. It looked like uh, someone wants to share. Is or it did we Audrey? Is oh, this Audrey like... you wanna share? <laughs> oh, is it you? Oh, okay. <laughs> No, we're not gonna volunteer of people, but if you I'm want to go for you. Okay, <laughs> everyone. I'm I'm just so happy and blessed to see Eileen ng akin ka, ka chat. <laughs> it's Eileen, yeah. And um, yeah, yung, yung takeaway ko nga is that um, focus on God lang talaga. Uh, kasi since I'm new here, I'm been three years, I am, but um, compare ko nga, inis ko nga, grabe yung mga experiences ni sis Eileen before sa ngayon. Kasi parang, Parang ang galing ni God sa nangyari rin sa experience namin na nakarating kami dito ng PR na, tapos dito na ako nagtaanap, tapos may bonus pa na baby. So parang sobrang blessed kami na sa nangyari na parang yun nga, kaya ka parang I, I'm so happy with our community here in GNI sa Feast. Kasi parang yun nga, yun yung way ko of like, ah, oh, nga no, oh, ito yung ano ko na uh, focus ng God and then yung be with yung... Uh, like-minded people. <laughs> Hindi ako mahihiya na mag-say ng God bless you. Merry Christmas! <laughs> so, you and I'm just so happy and blessed with you guys here. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Sis Aiden. Thank you and congratulations, Sis. Uh, baby number yes. two coming out next yes. month. The end of this month. Congratulations. Congrats. Thank you for awesome. sharing. Yes, anyone else wanted to share, you know, At what least you we have time to share. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who else? Maybe uh should I call you? <laughs> sis J, she, Sis J is, is smiling. <laughs> sis J, do you want to share? <laughs> Thank you for volunteering, Mrs. Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> I was sharing with uh, Sis Maria. She's from Eagle Rock. So she's blessed to have Sis Aileen as well in their feast. And I was telling her that um, being an immigrant with no family is really difficult. You know, but um, I've been here in the U.S. since 2009. And um, I think God really has put me people surrounded me with people na they continue to bless me support me motivate me and you know that's how i established like a good relationship with with the lord and yeah i just have to maintain it and keep it up yeah and yeah. then that, that's it that's what i'm i'm doing right now the gnis the visa at home the ministries the sundays and all that so yeah 
Let's Thank you for volunteering me again. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Okay, who's next? Us. So we have a, our last one more. Sister. Yeah, one more resilient more. sister. Um, I can see. <laughs> She's, or maybe uh, like the lessons that you've learned, um, you know, throughout your journey. Yes. No matter how long you've been here. Any lessons that you'd like to share to impart? I think I, for me, I, I do have something to share. You know, I haven't, I've been here like in and out of the U.S. But for me, one thing has changed is now being part of the community and the stories that people share just reminds me of how God is truly a consistent God. So when he's generous to one, he's generous to all. So all the stories that I'm hearing, hearing from sisters here, it tells me that if it hasn't been given to you, it will be given it to you. Whatever God's plan, it will be realized. So thank you for that constant reminder. It you know we can forget it in times of when it's a stormy time when it's time of maybe scarcity but the lord is generous to everyone so thank you for constantly reminding us of how faithful he is even though at times we are not thank you thank you this is, I, I think we have time for another share actually one more <laughs> okay yes. uh sis donna you're ready to say something. <laughs> I honestly feel that like we're in an award show and everyone was just <gasps> when they're being called. I'm happy and blessed to have shared with Sis Cora Calderon because um, we are in the same place like um, in Lancaster right now. So it's the first time I've shared like with her, like with my experiences. Um, thank you, Sis Eileen, also for the very um, good talk. It's like God is speaking to me through you. So, like, um, it's it's uh, for me. Um, I think um, God is really faithful. I just like for me. I just have to focus um, right now on Him. Like, even if I'm having difficulties right now. So um, this is like a great talk. It would it reminded me of how God loves me. And God loves you, Sis Donna. Yes. Thank you, Sis. Okay, so Sis Gail, thank you so much, ladies, for sharing. Um, and then um, we have some announcement, Sis Gail. Yeah. So earlier we actually spoke about um the gni retreat so we'd love to invite sis ira to talk more about the upcoming retreat which is also our second year anniversary celebration hello everybody yes good evening to all to all my sisters here we are inviting you to our second and well it's a second anniversary and we're celebrating it at as a retreat so it's going to be on september 3rd where we will gather together we will really be there to discover our gifts to share our gifts and to see how that could we can take it further and really elevate it in our lives so we hope you can be a part of that so if you're from whether you're from california or a different state come on come and join us we'd love to see you in person more details to come but you know you know that you are gifted so come and join us. Thank you. Thank so this, you. yes. So uh, this is going to be a, um, a live event, sisters. So if you have the chance, please see us in LA. So I'm actually flying from Washington to LA to attend this event. And I know we also have people from the East Coast who will be joining us. So it's going to be a great you know, reunion, we, we thought that it, it's time, you know, for us to actually meet in person. So yes, if you have that opportunity to fly, if you can, you know, take that weekend to come to LA, please do so. We'd love to see you there. Exciting. I'm going to see all of you in person. Um, Sis Lara, I'm finally going to see you in person. I'm so excited. And yeah, so September, it's going to be on September 3. 
um, we have the retreat in Hermosa Beach. And on the 4th, it's going to be a family and friends uh, fun day. So we'll have like potluck, you know, just hang out. So mm -hmm. hope to see you all. We're going to be sending the, again, the invitation to all of you. And I mm -hmm. hope that you guys can register before the 20th. So then we, we know how many people to expect. Um, so we could prepare, you know, we could prepare for this event. So, yeah. yes, see you everyone, especially those who live in LA. No excuses, come on yes. <laughs> within driving distance. We can do this, like, we'd, we'd really love to see you there. Yes. Yeah, and oh. then, yeah, next announcement is Kelly. Yes, and wow, it's it's already time, it time flies. Um, it's almost at the end of our event, and I just wanted to honor and thank all of our GNI team. Uh, we grew from being three and then now we have almost 20 and I am just so, we are so blessed. Our community is so blessed with, you know, having these beautiful ladies, um, very talented, very generous, sharing their time, their treasure and their talent. So if we could just give a round of applause for our GNI team and for, you know, the time that they spending to have our monthly event. So thank you so much, um, our team. And then, of course, thank you to our attendees uh, for being with us tonight. And we really appreciate you. I know, like, everyone's busy, but uh, you are here. And we are blessing each other uh, being here tonight. So thank you. Okay, and if we could please request um, our speaker for tonight, Sis Eileen, to do our closing prayer. Sis Eileen. Okay. Yes. Okay. So let's be reminded that we are always in the presence of God. So in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Father God, we praise and thank you for everything that happened um, tonight. I personally thank you for using me as your instrument. And I thank you for this um, GNI group of women who are very uh, focused and very um, committed in serving you through this uh, ministry, Lord God. May you continue to bless them, Lord God. And for us who are um, immigrants or even those who are not immigrants, we ask, thank you that you're always there and very faithful, Lord God, in our day-to-day -day lives, Lord God. We just ask that you continue to show us your plans as we seek you in our prayers daily, O Lord God. We have ask for an open heart and an open mind always to, to your Holy Spirit that we may be very may, we may be sensitive to your leading, O Lord God, so that in everything we do, in everything we say, we may give all the glory back to you. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you so amen. much. Thank, Thank you. you. Everyone agree? Thank you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy Thank, Thank you, Sister Shaw. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. It's my birthday party. Thank you, Sister. Enjoy your day. Thank you, Sister Thank you, Sister Kelly. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Sister Eileen. God bless. Hi. Happy birthday. 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 Happy birth